Frigate is a self-hosted network video recorder, or a CCTV system. It comes with AI object detection, and a timeline you can scrub through to see whatever is going on around your house. This will all run locally on your computer, and it can be accelerated with a CPU, a GPU, or even a Google Coral TPU. If you only have a CPU, it might be a little bit intensive, but it depends on your hardware. So to set this up, we'll be using Docker, or Docker Desktop if you're on Windows. And I assume you wouldn't run this on a Mac, but you definitely can if you want to. It's the same instructions. So if you need help on installing Docker, I have a video which I'll leave in the description, but it's pretty simple to install. So if this works for you, please leave a like and subscribe, and let's start the video. So I'm already SSH into my server computer, and if you're on Windows, I highly recommend just using the Linux environment, and you can set that up by running these three commands in different terminals. So first, we're just going to make a folder to store our files. I'm just going to name it frigate underscore docker. Then to enter that folder, we'll do cd, which is change directory, and then frigate underscore docker. And you can tap to autocomplete. Now we're going to create our compose file by doing nano compose.yml. But I like to use another text editor called micro, but you can use whatever you want. So once you're in this interface, whether it's nano or micro, we're going to go to the frigate docs, and I'll leave this in the description, and scroll down until you see docker. Now this is the default docker compose file, we're just going to copy this and go back and paste it. Now we're gonna have to scroll all the way to the top. You should just delete this. So if you're gonna be using a Google Coral TPU, you're gonna have to use one of these lines and then comment the rest out. So if you just had the USB version, you could just comment everything out like this. And then this line is for Intel hardware acceleration. And if you won't be using any of these and you'll actually be using your Nvidia GPU, you can go ahead and comment this entire section by doing this. So if you want to use a GPU instead, you're going to need to paste something from the description, and this will basically give the Docker container access to your NVIDIA GPU. Make sure this indenting is correct, this is four spaces here. Now for the image here, you need to specify which version of Frigate we want to use. If you go back to the docs and scroll down a little bit, you'll see the versions that are supported by the Docker image. But for the new UI for now, you're going to need to use this specific image. It's not in beta anymore, but it's still not in the stable release just yet. So for me, I will be using an NVIDIA GPU, so I will need to use this one. I highly recommend using the new UI. So for that, I'll leave a link to this in the description below. And all you need to do is copy this entire thing, depending on which version you're going to use. And over image, we're just going to delete this and paste in what we just copied. Now for this SHM size, this depends on how many cameras you're going to use and what resolution they are. To calculate this, I'll leave it in the description, but you're going to need to use this equation for each of your cameras and then you'll add it up and it will give you the necessary shared memory in megabytes. If you calculate it and it's under 64, I just recommend setting it to 64 because you might run into some other issues if it's under that. Now for the volumes, the only two things you need to change are these two lines for the config and the storage. So what volumes are, they're basically shared folders between your computer and a Docker container. You can think of a Docker container like a virtual machine in the aspect that it's separate from your computer. So it has its own files and it's completely separate from your computer. Whenever a Docker container is killed, all the data is lost unless we store it in a volume. So I'm going to keep all of this in the same folder as the Docker compose file. And to do that, I'm going to put a dot slash config meaning it will create a config folder in the same directory as this docker compose file. You can put this anywhere you want. So this local config folder will be shared to the container and it will be placed in this directory. And then for storage, I'm going to do the same thing. If you want to store your storage on some external hard drive or something like that, you can just replace this to the location of an external hard drive. And if you're on Windows and you want to do that too, your external hard drives will be in mount slash mnt slash the letter of the drive in lowercase so if it was something like E, and then you can put whatever name you want for the folder, and it will automatically create it. But for this, I'm just going to keep it in the same directory. Then you can leave all this as default. If you're going to be using Frigate on your local network, without any domain or anything like that, you're probably going to be using HTTP and not HTTPS. So you're going to need to uncomment out this port. Now it is unauthenticated, but it's just limited to anyone that has access to your home network. You can get HTTPS to work on your local network with the domain, but I'm not going to get into that in this video. I'll leave a link in the description or a card at the top right, which can help you set something like that up. And that is the configuration for Frigate. 
But if you want to set up notifications, you're going to need to use Home Assistant. It's an app that you can use on your iPhone and Android, and it's completely free. There's no official way to set up notifications in Frigate like this, because it's just a web page. But it is pretty simple and I'll walk you guys through it. I'll leave a link to the text in the description, so you can just copy and paste it. And this is MQTT, which is Mosquito. This is what Frigate will send events to. And then the Home Assistant will be listening in on this, and it will notify your devices whenever an event is sent out. For this, I recommend disabling these ports by commenting them out, because this does not need to be accessible to any other network besides Frigate and Home Assistant and it will already have access to that. You don't need to expose any ports. And now these volumes, I recommend just keeping it like this. It will make a mosquito folder in the same directory as the Docker Compose file. Now for Home Assistant, I'll also leave this in the description. And for this volume, I've also set it in the same directory. So basically all of the storage for Frigate, Home Assistant, and Mosquito will be in the same folder. And it makes it a lot more organized. Now we're completely done with setting up the Docker Compose file. So to save this, if you're using Nano, just do Control X, then hit Y and then enter. Now in micro, I'm just going to do Control S and then Control Q. Now before we start at the Docker containers, we're going to need to run this one command to create a configuration file for Mosquito. Now at the end over here for the path, if you change the path than what I put in the Docker Compose file, you can put that path here. But make sure it is in the right place. Now we can start the Docker containers. Now to start these containers up, all you need to do is type docker compose up to start it up dash d to run it in the background and if you ever need to restart any of these containers you can just do dash dash force dash recreate you'll need to do this after pulling the latest version of frigate whenever updates come out but since i've never run this before i'll just delete it up till here and then we'll run this now it should take longer than this but since i already have the images downloaded it doesn't have to take that much time to start it up now we can move on to the frigate camera configuration So this is what I see when I first open the page. And if you don't know how to get here, you're going to need your computer's IP address, the computer that's running Frigate. Now to edit the camera configuration, we're going to need to go to the bottom left and click on this settings icon, and then click on configuration editor. Now you'll see there's already a default configuration here, but I'm going to show you what my configuration is like. So I just made the text bigger. I will leave a link to my configuration file in the description below. And you can use it as a template and tweak it as you like. So I want it to notify me when a person, cat, or a dog is spotted in one of my cameras. And if you wanted to tweak the objects for each camera, you could put this objects block under each of the cameras. And I'll show you just where that is. Now here is where you want to put the link to your stream. After this ffmpeg colon. It'll start with the rtsp colon slash slash. And then put the IP address of your camera, the port, and then the link to access it. This is what mine looks like. This is just the name of the stream, I just named it Dryboy. For snapshots, this is when Frigate finds one of those objects that you listed above, and I made it so it only takes snapshots whenever an object is detected in a certain zone. And I'll show you guys how to set up zones later in the video. Now for the actual camera configuration, this is where you'll name your camera, and I just named it Dryboy. For the hardware acceleration arguments, this is what you put for NVIDIA. But for other types of devices, I'll put some of them on screen, but you can go to the Frigate docs and see which one is right for you. For this, I just recommend copying whatever I have. And for the actual path for the camera, instead of the IP address and port of your actual IP camera, we're gonna use the loopback address, which will point you back to the Frigate server. And this is because we already defined the path of the IP camera over here. So what you'll need to do is basically just copy this part, and then after the slash, you'll paste whatever you put over here. And then I'm using this for detecting and recording. For detection, just put the width and height of your actual camera. But for the FPS, just leave it at 5. Frigate does not need to be scanning every single frame that comes from your camera. These zones and masks I have are auto-generated. And I made this through the Frigate Zone and Mask Creator, which I'll show you how to do in a second. Now over here, I have the NVIDIA settings for object detection. And you can see what you have to copy and paste from the Frigate docs. So just look for whatever you have and just copy and paste it. NVIDIA's will be a little bit more down the page. And these are all the models that are available for the NVIDIA GPU. And this is basically what I copy and pasted. So just look for whatever you have to copy and paste depending on what kind of devices you have. And then the object detection should get better. So that is basically everything in my Frigate configuration. And you can just use this and build off of it. Everything will be in the description. 
To create zones and masks in Frigate, we can use the web UI for that. And I'm just using my iPhone camera to test right now. So when you're on this page, go to the settings on the left, and then click on settings. Now click over here. To create a zone, just click on the plus next to zones, and you'll be able to click where you want the zone to be. And then at the very end, you'll click back on the starting point. And you can also drag it around to your liking. What you're going to do is name it over here. And make sure the zone is not the name of a camera. Frigate will probably break if you do something like that. And if you have a space in your zone name, in the configuration file, you have to refer to it as underscore wherever there's a space. Then you can scroll down and then click save. And you can change any of this if you want. Now it says restart Frigate to apply changes. But I'm also going to show you how to add a mask. It's basically like the same thing. So if you set a mask in Frigate, you're telling Frigate to ignore that area whenever there's changes in the camera. So maybe there's some movement or something like that. And you should create masks for places where it's impossible for humans or like animals to be. It'll reduce the load on the server. You create it in the same way that you make a zone. And then you just click save. Now after that, to save your changes, you'll need to restart the server. It'll automatically place all of the necessary things in the configuration file. So that is how you set up masks and zones in Frigate. Now to set up Home Assistant, it's incredibly simple and everything is set up in the UI. So go to your server's IP address at the port 8123 if you set it to the default port. But for me, I already have an instance of Home Assistant running on that port, so I just changed it to 8122. So we're going to click on create smart home and then I'll create a name and password then click on create account. Now for location, you don't have to put your actual location, so I'll just put somewhere in the United States. Then click next. And then go ahead and click on finish. Now this is the home page of home assistant and we're first going to integrate MQTT. So to do that, scroll down in the sidebar and then click on settings. Now click on Devices and Services. And then we're going to click Add Integration. And then type MQTT. Then click on MQTT again. This is asking for the IP or the host name. And we're going to use the host name because it's a lot simpler. The IP address is not static and we already know the host name because we set it in the Docker Compose file. It's not the container name, but it's over here. Now I set it to MQTT, and that's probably what it is for you if you copy and pasted my compose file. And then we'll leave the port as default. And if you're wondering how Home Assistant will be able to access the MQTT server if nothing is exposed, it's because all these containers in this Docker compose file, they're running in the same network. So they already have access to each other. We don't have to expose anything to our local network. And then the username and password, we don't have it, we just left it as anonymous. Then click submit. I got an error at first, but I just connected again and it let me connect. So I'm just going to click finish. Now to add the Frigate integration, we're going to need to add the Home Assistant Community Store. So to do that, let's search for Home Assistant Community Store, then click on it. So we're running Home Assistant in a Docker container, so we're going to need to click container. And then we'll copy this. Now we're going to need to access the terminal of the Home Assistant container. So to do that, open a terminal, and then make sure you SSH into the server that's running Home Assistant. And then do a docker exec, and then dash it, and then the name of the Home Assistant uh, container. I set it to ha underscore server. It's whatever you set container name to. And then bash. Now let's just paste whatever we just copied. And now it will download the Home Assistant community store. And now to restart Home Assistant, what we're going to do is exit out of this Docker container by doing Control D. So to restart, we can click on the developer tools over here and then click on restart and then restart again. Now we'll just wait until this reconnects. So I just hit the reload button again and it seems to be back up. Then I'm back over here at the integrations and we're going to click add integration. And then we'll do HACS. When you click on it, you have to acknowledge all of this. And then click submit. And you'll need to add the Home Assistant Community Store to your GitHub account. It won't have access to anything that isn't public. So there's no risk in adding this to your account. I'm just going to continue. And then I'll enter the code that it has provided me. I just pasted it here and click continue. 
and then all it will have access to is public information. And I already have it integrated so I don't have to do this, but I'm just going to click authorize again. Now after that, I'm just going to close out of this tab. And now we have successfully added the integration. I'm just going to click finish. Now to actually add Prigit, we're going to scroll over here and we'll see the Home Assistant Community Store. Now I've already searched for Frigate, so I'll just put that over here and then click on the three dots over here and click on download. Then click download again. And now it will want you to restart Home Assistant again. So to do that, we can just go to settings and then we can click the restart required button and it will let us restart from here. And now it is restarted in a couple of seconds. Now if we go over to settings and devices and services again, and then we click add integration, we should see Frigate over here. I'm just going to click it and scroll down. Now again over here, we'll need the host name of Frigate, and this is where it should be in the Docker Compose file. And we'll be using port 5000 because that is what Frigate is using for unauthenticated access. And even if you don't open this port, Home Assistant will still have access to it, which is what we want. So I'm just going to click submit, and I'm just going to click finish. If I go back to the dashboard or the overview tab, I'll be able to scroll down and I can see my driveway over here. Now I don't really like the Home Assistant Frigate integration. It's not really that well developed, but the only reason we're using it is for the notifications. So to actually set up these notifications, I'll leave the link in the description, but we'll need to import this blueprint for adding notifications for Frigate in Home Assistant. So what we're going to do is click on import blueprint to my Home Assistant, and we want the stable version. And then it'll ask you for your instance URL, and I already set it over here. But just go back to your web UI and copy everything up until the port number. And then it should just be HTTP, the IP, colon, and then the port for your Home Assistant server. Then I'm going to click on open link. It's going to tell us we're importing a blueprint. We're going to click preview, and then we'll just import the blueprint. Now from here, we can click on automations. And if we click create an automation, we'll be able to click on frigate notifications. And then if we scroll down, we can select the camera that we have. And I already see my driveway camera. And then from here, you'll have to select the device that you want to send notifications to. And your device will only show up once you download the Home Assistant app, and then you sign in. But if you scroll down and click on filters, you should enable zone filters. Only if you have zones though. And don't worry about these zones, these are not created by Frigate, these are just Home Assistant zones. But whatever you type in here, it will be the zones that Frigate is using. Just don't worry about what's over here. So I named mine test zone with a space, but instead of a space you have to put an underscore. And then I'll just click enter and then it will add this zone over here. So I'll only get notifications if something is in that certain zone. And then everything else, you should probably leave it as default, but you can change whatever you want. And you will need to make this automation for each of the phones you want to be notified. There is a way to make phone groups in Home Assistant, but I haven't really tried figuring that out yet. If any of you guys know how to do that, I'd greatly appreciate it if you leave it in the comments down below. But anyways, I'm just gonna click save, and then I'll just name it Frigate Notifications. It's not letting me save unless I actually add a phone to Home Assistant, so I'm just gonna do that real quick. I just logged in with my phone, and then I reloaded the page, and I see my phone over here. Now I'm going to click save, and now Frigate with notifications is completely set up. So that is how you set up Frigate with notifications on any computer. If this works for you, please leave a like and subscribe, and if you run into any issues, please leave them down in the comments below, and I'll try to respond as quick as possible. Anyways, I'll see you in the next video.